Welcome to Digital Asset News Clips, where we take advancements in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today, we're going to continue on as we take a look into the Cardano ecosystem and the things that are being built on Cardano. Like I've said before, just in the same way that Ethereum really just uh, had a massive run in 2017 with everything being built on it for all the ICOs, then we had Binance Chain, everything being built on it, and decentralized exchanges and the swaps and everything else. I think now is Cardano's time to really take off with the advent of smart contracts, which are coming in uh, August with the Alonzo release. So all the things that are being built on it, I find fascinating to see what could be the next big thing. And one of the things we want to take a look at today is Charlie. And Charlie, it is an oracle for um, the Cardano network. So first of all, just as a as a the basic nuts and bolts of what an oracle is, blockchains are within their own little ecosystem. It's very hard for them to pull outside data. How do you pull any kind of uh, financial pricing? How do you pull, and people talk about this all the time, uh, weather or temperature or any type of like data that we can get you know, quite easily just uh, looking at uh, Google and those types of things. The problem is, is that we can get this information, but it's hard to pull it in. And then here's another thing. If you're doing anything with like decentralized finance, what if one of those, that one central point has a point of failure and you're getting the price information that is totally incorrect and you get your rug pulled and everything else. So the point of this is, is to have multiple uh, areas that you can pull the information into from and you need to pull this outside data <clears throat> into these blockchains, such as Cardano, with an Oracle. And this is where Charlie comes in. So Charlie, uh, the website is charli3.io. I will look, I will list that in the uh, description below, but here's essentially what it is. And I think the, when people think about Oracle, uh, they think of really uh, Chainlink or maybe even Band. And this is just another, uh, this is an Oracle, but solely based and built on the Cardano network. So what's going on here? So we can take a look at the white paper, but real quick, how Charlie works is just pulls data from API. So like if you have something from like uh, Huobi or KuCoin or any kind of exchange, and it needs to pull that data in, and we want to take a look at like data that we need for like decentralized finance, a compound, a synthetics, uh, a DAO, we need to find this information and we need to pull it into this specific blockchain order project. And that's where Charlie comes in. So here's the features. Uh, ensured node consensus. And we're going to talk to uh, one of the guys over at Charlie in a little bit as we do a quick interview. Aggressive node reputations. Trustless data feed network. And I'm assuming we're looking at uh, multiple points. So we don't just have one point of failure. And easily accessible for Cardano-based projects. That's the big key. Cardano-based projects. So... Uh, the Cardano ecosystem at your fingertips as a wave of projects launch on ADA. Charlie will continue, will help you connect to their information accurately. And this is just one of those ecosystem nice little graphics. As time moves on, because right now it is uh, May 26th or 25th, 2021, we haven't even launched smart contracts on Cardano, but things are really gearing up. So I expect Charlie to be at the epicenter of what makes everything work in the Cardano ecosystem. That's why I'm excited to uh, talk about it. And this is just the very base layer. And moving forward, the big thing, <clears throat> there's actually two big things, the tokenomics. And then if we have to take a look at the integration. So we'll take a look at the tokenomics first. First of all, this is the total supply. It's only 100 million tokens, 100 million. So if you think about it, that sounds like a lot, right? But think of like Bitcoin and how much it went up and only has 21 million. And we only have 18 and a half million out there. Went up pretty, pretty fast, right? And there's other different projects that have like billions and billions, uh, XRP being one of those. And other ones just having like trillions. You know, if you look like a Shiba Inu or Dogecoin, if you're into those types of things, I am personally not. So 100 million doesn't seem like quite a bit. And uh, this is how everything's being broken down. So for the seed, the seed round, 18% went out, private 13%, public is six. For liquidity providers or farming, 31%, liquidity three, dev pool, reserves, and team. The real question is, and I knew we're going to ask this, this question is, for all these different projects, how much are actually being uh, locked up in a locked up period? So that'll be a question uh, definitely to ask. And then 
uh, to continue on before we move on. The roadmap is pretty simply laid out. We're already in quarter two. We're in, uh, you know, like I said, May coming up into quarter three. So they they launched. They uh, they had a uh, initial Dex offering marketing. They distributed the ERC twenty tokens, set up off chain cone and off chain code, and reviewed the ADA test net. And this is where it gets interesting in Q three, which is coming up in July, August, September, when they migrate to Cardano. So this is where the river meets the road. And this is why I'm excited about Cardano and how things are moving forward. Again, I think for all these projects, they're going to need some type of Oracle to pull this outside data into the blockchain and then go from there. And then Q4, they're going to try to solidify, probably do some more marketing, expand technical capabilities as they grow and start to scale. So interesting stuff. We'll see how it all goes. Up. And then you got the team. And if you've been on the channel any length of time, there's a couple things to talk about which is for every project that you look at, make sure it's got really two things. And that is, does it actually solve a problem and has utility and actually things are actually being done or does it does absolutely nothing and just like another me too project. On top of that, what is the team and how strong are they? And I'll let the guys over at Charlie explain that, but we got uh, our chief operating officer, uh, Robert Heaver, Jonas Lindgren, the CTO, and Damon, who we're gonna talk about to in a bit, is the marketing officer. So we'll go from there. So. From this, the big thing to me, and you're probably asking yourself is, well, how does this 100 million compare to like another Oracle? So let's just start off with that. And then we'll get into integrations. So right now, Charlie isn't even ranked, okay? It's two bucks. It's two bucks at 100 million. That's crazy, first of all. And of course, as it launches, it's only been out for a couple of weeks now. Of course, when, of course, when it launches, everything in, in crypto starts off high and just takes a little bit of slam down forward, right? So it was, what, $1.90 and dropped down to a whopping $1.72. And remember these prices if you're watching this in a year from now. This is going to be funny. And then you hit a peak at two thirteen, dollars and now we are down to $1.86. So we'll take those numbers, $100 million circulating supply, 100 million max supply. Now let's take a look at another Oracle called Chainlink. So Chainlink right now is $30 and its max supply is 1 billion. And we've seen a lot of price action here. Over a year, it's gone up almost 700%. If we can take a look at, let's take a look at max. Same type of thing, 48 cents, dropped up to around $2, $1.84, $1.73. Well, sideways action, and then up we go. And then, of course, we had the big crash, which we're re reversing right now. So, if we just take a look at just the economics of it, looks pretty good. Now, we'll take a look at the integrations. Charlie is collaborating with Fractal. It's a KYC AML platform to provide real uh, on-chain price data for tokens in a wallet. I think this will be big, especially for well, KYC AML digital ID, especially with what the vision that IOHK has in Africa. So that would be big for there. Here is the COO, Robert Heaver. He works uh, directly with Y Combinator Startups, top 10 US banks, former C, he worked alongside the former CTO, the chief, chief technical officer of YouTube, and the AI tech advisor to the Obama administration, which was President Obama here in the United States. And then more integrations, uh, integrate with Dex Tools, a DeFi hub of Ethereum and BSC, to create a new standard for digital asset management. It will aggregate price data from Dex tool data feed, and then also with Parsec. And this is a solution uh, consistent of tools for analyzing blockchain data, real-time blockchain monitoring, and Coin98. And the big one, what I see, is uh, Charlie with Card Starter. And that is uh, initial Dex offering platform. And as they say it here, it's a gateway. One of the best ways to ensure a smooth and hassle-free launch. And we also see, saw that with Polka Starter over on the Polkadot network. Again, every one of these ecosystems has their time. And I think that Cardano is just coming into its own. So those are the big things. And then uh, there's a buying guide here if you want to go through Uniswap. I personally hate Uniswap. <laughs> the prices are so ridiculous. But what's cool about this, and you can find that on the website itself, says uh, buying guide. I'll take you right to this itself. And it'll tell you this is the official contract address because people going to Uniswap, they were putting in like 
uh, you know, Charlie are, are in, in the past people were putting on like the same type of token I think it was, and they got rug pulled and it was the exact opposite. So just use the official contract address, put that into Uniswap and find Charlie. Uh, Cause that's really the big place it's at. Let me actually, let me come back over on coin gecko. Just so you know, if you want to take a look at where you can buy all these different projects, if you, if you click on trading pairs, there's usually like a huge amount of, of places. You'll have like the Coinbase's, the gate IOs, the Gemini's, the whatever's. But in this one, as we click on it, there's only one place you can get it right now, Uniswap. And it's rare and it's new. And it's one of those things that maybe you can take a little bit look into. Again, on this channel, it's all about doing your own research. This is just financial opinion, not financial advice. Even though I hate Uniswap, I will probably, no. We'll be buying into Charlie probably today or tomorrow because I think it's a solid project. And the real question I have is first of all, lockup periods. Uh, the team itself, and then just uh, gets uh, the team over there to answer this is the insured node consensus and aggressive node reputation. So let's do this. That is what Charlie uh, is in a nutshell. Let's roll into the interview and get some questions answered and see what it's all about. All right, everybody. So we took a look at what Charlie actually is as far as the Oracle. And I wanted to get somebody in here just to kind of answer some questions because I need questions answered. We need questions answered. And thankfully, I got Damon Zwarich to come in. He is head of marketing over at Charlie. So Damon, thanks for coming on and just kind of explaining what the heck is going on with Charlie. So the first one I had, which was the most basic, because I, I have to ask these questions because it with everything that's going on out there, there's so many different projects. Why did you guys decide to build on Cardano? Because you have so many choices to do these things. So why was it Cardano? What led you to it? What made you go, this is the one? Yeah, well, I mean, first off, Rob, thanks for having me on. Uh, I think this is great to just finally get a, a, a face out to the public here and answer these questions because we've been wanting to do it for uh, quite a while. Um, answering your first question there of how we chose to build on Cardano, well, that personally, we think it's kind of a no-brainer, right? It's the new, it's the innovative thing going forwards. Um, it seems more stable. Uh, the, the code helps us, the, using the Haskell code helps us really get uh, validity in our data providing to our consumers. And I think that's our main focus as an Oracle, is to make sure we have uh, valid and concise data to provide to other spaces. Uh, the opportunity was there for sure. It's, it's new. Like I mentioned before, we're building forwards. We're building towards something more uh, innovative. Yeah. And we love the background and the vision of what Cardano is and what uh, Charles is, is building out there, right? Something that has a lot more real world use case. We see the ability for us as an Oracle to even get into more real world use cases uh, out there, like say in the medical sector. Um, and mm -hmm. we really want to we really want to bring that forwards uh, and also the, the academic approach of this, right? Our team is pretty academic in their background um, and we really like the uh, research and the peer reviewed uh, area of it to make sure it seems far more uh, stable and, and again, valid. I, I use that word a lot um, as we go forward because it, it just, it gives that base and that consistency and uh, confidence in, in innovating. Well, so, yeah. yeah. Perfect. So just like we talked about before, because we both come from medical backgrounds. So it's important yeah. to see that research. I mean, especially just in like, if you take a look at medications, right, you have to go through a lot of peer research, the FDA has to take a lot of different tests and studies to actually go and say, this is okay for the public. And I think yeah. when I first saw this on Cardano, I didn't understand it as an entrepreneur. But as I, as I look back as, you know, somebody who has to take a look at those things, as, you know, medical wise, I'm like, oh, well, now it totally makes sense because we don't want a sushi swap. We don't want a burger swap or whatever else kind of like <laughs> projects out there. They got hacked, which is a real pain in, in the A. And then you said something about the language. And I, this is something that we talked off off camera about the programming language itself, Plutus and Haskell because mm -hmm. you wear many hats, not only are you marketing, but it's also, you're also taking a look for the next team member. Talk to us real quick about that programming language and how it's been a help and a hindrance uh, as far as like finding those new team members. Sure, that's, that's great actually. I, I think that honestly, every program that's building on Cardano right now or for Cardano is, is running into the same problem. So 
Haskell isn't exactly a very new code, but it's not a highly used code, right? And right. so in that aspect, there aren't a lot of uh, great people on it. We've been very fortunate to have our lead CTO, Jonas, uh, who has, is decently well-versed in, in Haskell code, but uh, finding more devs to, to help us speed up our, our production and, and do everything right is a little bit different uh, and difficult at the moment, but we're, we're proving to be okay with it. We're, we've been interviewing people all of last week and getting into our final rounds this week, which is very exciting. So we can finally ramp up our production, get something more public going on. And uh, outside of that, we've been trying to look into the Plutus Pioneers program, which is being uh, organized and everything by uh, Cardano. And so there's a lot of people coming out of there. There's a lot of new graduates uh, from actual academic institutions that are going through the Blues Pioneers program. I think they're finishing up their first round right now. But these guys are, they're hot on the market, right? Everybody wants them. So uh, yeah. we got to, we're trying to, we're trying to get forwards there and, uh, and try and grab one. And, and we, we have secured a few interviews with, with guys that are going through the program. So we're pretty excited for our development team going forward. Yeah, and this is what I talked to, to my friend Hashoshi about because he's a developer. And because when I hear about Charles talking about future proofing, I'm like, well, you know, uh, you know, quantum uh, mechanics or uh, uh, quantum computing, excuse me. And then him going through all these things. And I'm like, well, how, you know, what is going on? But then when the when you talk to me about the language, you're like, but you probably don't understand. It's because it's a, you know, a lot of these newer guys that are coming out, they're the ones that actually are building on this language and understand the language. And just the older type of programmers are either picking it up or they never really dealt with it before. So I kind of get where things are going. It's a little bit different, but I think I get it. Yeah. I mean, there, a lot of academic institutions right now will teach at least a module on Haskell code. Uh, so those newer people are a little bit uh, easier to, to work with and start innovating. But you know, we need the the practical world experience too. So it's a nice balance of both. Perfect. And then the second question I had was about the team itself. Now you've got, yep. you got yourself head of marketing. You got Robert Heber, Heber and Jonas Lindgren, the, <laughs> the, the, the CTO. So just real quick, we talked about Robert a little bit uh, and his, mm -hmm. his entrepreneurship and the things that he's done as far as building businesses, which I really do believe you, you need to have in every uh, every startup. I mean, you got to have somebody who knows uh, the CTO side, the accounting side, the marketing side, business startup, but you got to have, you know, the also a really strong CTO. So tell us real quick about Jonas. Uh, so Jonas has been in the crypto space uh, quite a long time, like longer than me and, and Rob, for sure. He's been involved with other programs. He just had XBTC that he launched. He has um, mm -hmm. development credits on a program called or a project called Nova Pago. Uh, and he's still involved with uh, both of those as well and, and finishing up operations, but focusing most of his experience on Charlie. Um, he, yeah, he has a, a long background in, in academics as well, teaching um, computer science. Uh, so he used to be a professor for a while and, uh, then he, he switched into cryptocurrency. So, and investments. Perfect. Sounds like you guys are under good hands, uh, in that yeah. department. So we got all those things. Let's talk real quick about the tokenomics because it looks like there's some exploration going on. I think you guys have, is it a hundred million, million tokens? Yeah. hundred million tokens. Okay. So talk to us real quick about how that's all going to work as far as the token. I think you can only get those on Uniswap, right? Yeah, right now, uh, everything's just on Uniswap. Um, because of our vesting contracts going forwards and the only uh, like that don't start releasing till later, that information will be out uh, today, the 31st. Um, oh, so hey, that'll be up. <laughs> that'll be up on our uh, Twitter and stuff. We'll be posting a graphic later, but it is a uh, linear uh, model every six months or so it, it changes slightly but going up to uh, 80 million uh, tokens and then the last 20 million are for uh, node rewards so that'll yeah. be over a lot a five-year period staying for the long haul and then mm -hmm. as far as uniswap damon is there any other place <laughs> you guys are in talks to because i hate the gas fees i hate the gas uh, <laughs> We hate the gas fees too. And I was, I was getting there. I mean, that's another reason we're trying to build on Cardano. I think like anybody else really is to try and reduce those. But right now, uh, the only other listing that's talked about, they said they're going to list us is, is gate IO. Now the only problems that we have in going towards other things is we don't have 
uh, those tokens to provide liquidity to other uh, exchanges at the moment, right? So yeah. if we can manage to get those, say, from our LP farming events with C-Swap once that ends uh, through Card Starter, then we could potentially use that towards um, listing on other uh, on other exchanges. Got you. So is is it on Gate.io right now, or are you waiting for what you just we're, talked about? Looking we're just about? talking. They Yeah, they just uh, contacted us the other day. So we're just in oh. talks about uh, doing that. But Gate.io is good. Um, we were looking at, uh, I think it was a newer project called Zero Swap the other day, which uh, say that they have nothing, like no uh, no gas fees, but I'm not so sure about that. So we had an interview with uh, the guys over, over at Zero Exchange. And what's great about Zero mm-hmm. Exchange is that they allow you to go in there. They give you a little bit of Avalanche uh, mm-hmm. in your account so you can buy more Avalanche So you because the fees are like ridiculously low. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's a perfect tie-in. All right. So I'll yeah. wait until you guys get on zero. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about it. And then the other thing with gas fees, because we hate them so much, you can track when gas fees are the lowest and highest during different points of the day. For us okay. in the North American area, right, gas fees are actually quite low between the hours of like two to five in the morning, like sometimes under $10. But like during the day, up to 100, right? So just it's really easy to try and strategically point that out and, and you know get your buys uh, on any project right when the gas fees are the lowest because uh, that e- makes it easier for the mo- the retail investor you know to get into any project including our own perfect so everybody watching at home uh, if you're in the, the United States North America Canada somewhere around there uh, just so you know wake up at two or three o'clock in the morning and it'll save you a boatload of money so just do that yeah. and then uh, Damon talk to us real quick about the token migration process, because right now we can't, you know, we can't have it on Cardano. It sounds like there's going to be a token swap at some point. So just real quick, tell us what's that going to look like and maybe a time frame. I don't know if you can talk about that. Sure. Time frame as far as our our swap over is is dictated by Card Starter at the moment. So they are creating a bridge for all of their projects, all their IDO projects, the going forwards to have an instant swap through them straight over to Cardano mainnet. Nice. Um, so that's so that's how that's going to work. Uh, they're building that and it will happen as soon as mainnet goes live. Like that's obviously the, the goal at the moment. Um, so we're going to be bridging through card starter uh, as a community, as the like card starter type community, all those IDOs together. And we will have at that point, because we're all building together to begin with, uh, we should have all of that data uh, integrated uh, instantly right off the bat. So we can all get to work straight away. Uh, as soon as mainnet launches. Oh, that sounds so easy. I got to get yeah. those. And Hey, thanks for introducing me to those guys card starter. I'll have them on the, on the show soon. So they can yeah. explain more so about all that. Oh, all right. they got it all. Yeah. They got it all. And then lastly, our last question, this will be, uh, for a little bit more technical. What, Cause I had this question when we were going through, um, the actual, uh, information part of the Charlie website. So as right. far as our features, you got four parts here. And I need to have you break it down for everybody, especially, well, me, especially. <laughs> Insured node consensus, aggressive node reputation, trustless data feed network, and easily accessible for ADA-based projects. What are we talking about here, Damon? Sure, I'll get right to it. So these answers are coming straight from CTO Jonas to try and give uh, you guys the best possible uh understanding of what these mean. So our insured node consensus um, is that it's making sure that each node that's participating in our network as a provider uh, has to take stake some Charlie 3 as a requirement for participating uh, with that node. Um, and if a node's found to be incorrect in its information and its data providing uh, or it's you know, misbehaving in other ways, yeah. um, part of that stake might be uh, slashed or gotten rid of as a punishment towards those misbehaving nodes and that wrong information. So right. that's why we're it's ensured that way to make sure that people are providing the correct uh, data towards us so they're not losing out on, on their investments as well. Um, the aggressive node reputation. So when weighing the answers of individual uh, Oracle nodes and nodes with established uh, reputations that people think are good, um, they're given more credence than, than the new nodes without like any history to them so that's where we're going on that one got it uh with the trustless data feed network right 
Each data feed produces an answer by considering the answers from multiple Oracle participants. Uh, that way an answer can be backed up by several individual nodes and a decentralized answer can be uh, reached without having to rely on like any single node. So it's a, it's a group kind of activity on that way. So just to make sure that it's uh, having that validity in, in our final answers and, and data uh, providing. Got it. Um, the easy accessible for database projects. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're a Cardano chain Oracle. That's what we're building towards. Um, we'll be available on the test net as well during the Cardano uh, testnet like whenever that's functioning uh we're in talks with uh with the cardano foundation this week and iohk to figure out how that's uh actually going to be shaping up and yeah so on that one we we hope to because of that right we want to be available on the first day like i talked to you about before uh when we swap over right everything's connected already and uh we're ready to go understanding those systems perfectly uh and already integrated with everything sounds good so no single points of failure a lot of different yep. backups a lot of uh, mm. uh making sure that these people are actually good actors and not doing the wrong things which exactly. will lead to more decentralization and then a little bit more trust and hopefully uh, a great project gotcha all right, Damon, thanks for answering all of uh, my questions. Oh, I'm sure we'll have you back on as time uh, moves forward because we want to see exactly what's happening with the project. But before we leave, any last words of wisdom from Charlie and the group? Last words of wisdom, guys, to me is just that this space is, is crazy, it's volatile, and I think having friends in the space is a really good idea, right? This mm -hmm. idea of community going forwards with all our projects. Um, it, I think is really important to have support in here so we don't get too emotional. Um, yeah. So yeah, find some buddies, make it fun. That's what I liked about this space. Just make it fun, guys. Look, it's it, to, to me, it's, it's, it's like this. We really, in the crypto space, we're really like a family. Sometimes you don't get along with your brother and sister, but when push comes to shove, you got to back them up. All right, yeah. Damon, <laughs> thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate it. We'll have you back soon. Thanks a lot, Rob. See you later. All right, so I hope that made a lot of sense. I want to thank uh, uh, Damon for coming on and uh, interviewing. That uh, was uh, great. We can kind of get, we can put a face to a project that I think is always great for trust. And again, um, for this project, I will be buying into Charlie. I will be a holder of Charlie and probably a long-term holder because I believe in the long-term function and vision of Cardano. So if you like that video, first of all, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. A lot of things that we talk about here on this channel are more of the advanced things and new projects. If you want to find out more about news and the daily happenings, take a look at Digital Asset News. Also, if you like this video, consider sharing it with other people who you think might have an interest in the Charlie Project. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for uh, being with us. See you on the next one.